Can we recreate this dashboard in a Python web app? I'm on a call with a financial data analyst. He's a pro at pulling data from a SQL database and crafting those impressive Excel dashboards with data cleaning VBA macros and crazy and maintainable pivot table charts everywhere. He's excited to convert those Excel macros to a Python web app. So he showed me this blog post and I've been building Streamlit for the past three years now. I can tell you this doesn't look anything like Streamlit. This is how far I could get after two hours of DuckDB SQL, Plotly, and nested streamlit columns. Let me show you how I did. Open a folder in VS Code with an empty Streamit app Python file and a random Excel with sales data. I got one from the Power BI website. Our first goal is to display that Excel file in a Streamit app that live reloads whenever you edit code. Create a new Streamit config toml file. This contains specific Streamit configuration for this project folder, especially setting that live reload on saving the file. Open a new terminal, run the Streamit run your file command, and now your Streamit web app should appear in a new browser tab. Write a new Hello World Markdown title in the script, save the script, and your app should live reload with the new text. VS Code and Streamit are now configured and raring to go. Now we need to display that Excel file. We should load it in a pandas data frame. Pandas has a dedicated read Excel method. Let's slide that inside a new load data method and decorate it with ST cache data so Streamit stores and reuses the result from the method whenever it runs with the same input variable. STWrite is like a Python chameleon. It defaults into whatever variable type you give it. Now sure, you can pass the data frame in STWrite to display it, but you'll be missing out on advanced data frame display configuration that comes with the ST data frame method. Get into the habit of browsing the Streamit documentation for all existing widgets, or watch my Streamit epic video, it has a demo of almost every widget. Let's steer away from using a hard-coded path to our Excel file. Replace it with ST file uploader. This will return your uploaded object, which you can store in a Python variable and load with pandas. Streamlit will scream in despair when the user hasn't uploaded anything. Keep this in check with an if condition on the variable and a message info to guide the user into uploading something. Your app reruns from top to bottom at every user interaction. So when the script reruns because you uploaded a new file, the variable will now have an identity and pass the if check. Good work! Let's tidy up the app and make some space for the upcoming data plots. Streamit has an array of layout components to let us arrange, hide, and sort out widgets. For instance, that file uploader takes too much space in the center section. You can set any widget in the sidebar by calling sidebar in between the ST module and the method, or include multiple elements to the same sidebar by invoking them under the with ST sidebar context manager. Let's also hide the data frame in a data preview block with ST Expander. No one likes to see massive data tables with numbers, right? That data frame looks a little trapped in a bird cage. While you can find the wide layout in the hamburger menu to free some space for the frame, a preferable option is to initialize the app in wide mode using the set page config first thing in the app. This is also a good opportunity to provide a tab title and icon to differentiate it from your thousand other running Stack Overflow tabs. Finally, that year column doesn't look like a year column. Streamly has a new column config for data frames that lets you configure the display of named columns. In this case, display the year column as a full number, no commas included. Looking good. Now here comes the good part where the stage is all set to add dazzling plots. Our big raw data frame is ready, but it's not easy to consume data like this. We need to clean it, remove, <laughs> remove duplicates, drop some columns, and aggregate it before we can build plots that people can consume. Our Excel worksheet is in a pandas data frame, so you can run it through pandas processing, but today I'd rather not. My data analysts, they turn nope. away from reading pandas code, they need their daily fix of SQL code. There are multiple libraries for running SQL over pandas, yet my current preferred way is DuckDB. It's an in-memory vectorized database that can run SQL on top of pandas data frames, without any time-consuming import to DuckDB tables. Let's process the data view for the bottom left line chart. Select the software sales for the year 2023.
We now have a wide table where sales are spread into multiple month columns. Several plotting libraries accept a sequence of columns as input, but I recommend you get used to melting your white data frame into a long data frame where all the sales of the months are pulled into a single column and another month column differentiate the month for the rows. In DuckDB SQL world, this is done through the unpivot statement. Store the previous query in a CTE and unpivot the sales into two new long columns, sales, and month. This is now ready for plotting. You could easily use the streamit line chart method to plot this. It will produce a pretty decent Altair chart for you. The issue is, this chart is not terribly customizable. I have no clue how to add a title or annotate the data points. You could rebuild it in Altair, but Altair doesn't seem to have a gauge plot. Well, I'll let you in my little secret for interactive Trimly dashboards. I use Plotly for most of my interactive plots. Plotly has an easy to use Plotly Express API, pretty similar to the Streamit one. But if you want more custom information plotting, there's also the low level plotly graph objects. In fact, the only way I found to build this indicator, I'll show you later in the video, is with the low level graph objects. Anyway, let's rebuild the line chart with plotly express using the correct x, y, and color column. Store the resulting plotly figure, display it in Streamlit using the plotly chart method, and add a use container rift so it fits the current column it's in. Yes, imagine this as a very big column. Plotly has an extensive documentation. You'll find the plotly express line method as arguments to add a title, markers, and text annotations. It will add the corresponding graph objects for you into the plotly figure. We will update the position of all text annotations on the line chart trace to top center. And there you are, one good looking, easy to update graph. I'll blaze through the other plots. It's a different SQL query with a group by sum and a bar chart, sometimes grouped, sometimes stacked. For the top left corner, we leave the easy to use Plotly Express API for the advanced low level Plotly graph objects. Create two new methods, one for the metric and one for the gauge. See we are building a Plotly figure to which we are adding an indicator object. In the metric method, we are leaving the default version of the indicator. In the gauge method, we are using the gauge mode of the indicator to transform the metric into a gauge. Pimp each gouge using the documentation, with a maximum bound, a bar color using the CSS values from the streamlit color theme, prefix and suffix for the displayed values, and the titles for both the indicators. Now what is that spark line hiding behind the indicator? Thankfully, we are free to add any number of traces to a given plotly figure. Add a new graph object field line chart with the values you need in the figure with the metric. Update the figure to hide all the axes. And finally, by playing a bit with the figure layout margins, you can minimize the white space taken by both indicators all the graphs are now separated into distinct methods, ready to be used by your Streamit app. And by the way, you could decorate all of those with cache data, so the generated plotly graphs are stored for future reruns. Well, it's time to arrange all those plots in a grid to make a tasty looking app. If you run every method in your app, all the plots will be one over the other. To solve this, Streamit has the concept of column, so you can fit multiple elements horizontally. Let's create two rows, a row of five columns and a row of two columns. You can call any number of Streamlit widgets in the column context manager to sort them in. And since we added the use container width on every plotly chart, they should fit nicely in the small column. You can control the width of columns by using a list of length ratios instead. Streamit also accepts one level of column nesting, so you can also divide the top row into two columns and then split the left one into four new columns. And this is what you get after putting the right methods in the right columns. There, you can deploy the app and every of your colleagues can now upload their own Excel financial data to get their own dashboard without ever touching VBA macros again. There are many ways to go further from making the loaded data frame editable to correct sales in real time from the app to custom plotly cross-filtering that you can find about in this video. I'll see you around. Bye!